Hello, I'm Alan Bowman. I'm a PhD student at the University of Cambridge and a member of Emmanuel College. Today I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the work I've been doing during my PhD. I work in the physics department on new materials for solar panels. As I'm sure many of you are aware, there is an ongoing energy transition from fossil fuels to lower carbon forms of energy, and solar panels form part of this mix. If you were to go to buy a solar panel today, the material that absorbs the sun's light within the solar panel would almost certainly be silicon, and the efficiency of the solar panel, that's the energy out compared to the sun's light energy hitting the panel, would be around 20%. In an ideal world, this efficiency would be 29%, and it is impossible to get higher than this efficiency due to physical constraints. However, there are ways to get higher efficiency solar panels by using multiple materials to absorb different regions of the sun's spectrum. By that, I mean you could have silicon absorbing red light and a second material absorbing blue light within the solar panel. There are several candidates for this second material, and one of the most promising are a group of materials called metal halide perovskites. These were first tried in solar panels in 2010, and since then efficiencies have increased dramatically, and they now rival those of commercial silicon solar panels. However, if you were to try and buy a perovskite solar panel, you'd be sorely disappointed as they are not commercially available and there are two main reasons for that. The first is that they contain lead and the second is that their stability is not very good. By that I mean if you were to put it on your roof it would stop working after two days. There is a huge amount of work worldwide going into trying to solve both of these problems and I'd like to share a little bit of work we've been doing at Cambridge to try and solve them. It's possible to replace some of the lead in a solar panel with tin, so you can have a lead tin or a tin only perovskite solar panel. Unfortunately, when you do this, as we found when we made some in Cambridge, the stability gets even worse, so rather than lasting for two days, it lasts for two hours, say. We were incredibly lucky and by accident found that if we also added a small amount of zinc into the perovskite mixture, then these lead tin perovskites la suddenly lasted a lot longer. When I am judging stability, what I'm looking at is how long an electron lives within the material. And in my world, if an electron lives a millionth of a second, that's fantastic and is long enough for the material to work as a good solar panel. With the lead tin perovskites, we found that all of them had uh, electron lifetimes around a millionth of a second, which was excellent news. However, when we took lead tin perovskites and exposed them to air, these lifetimes dramatically fell over a number of hours. When we made the same material but included zinc, these electron lifetimes remained around a millionth of a second, which was very, very reassuring in that we'd found a way to stop the degradation mechanism. We wanted to understand what we'd done to stop this degradation mechanism, and to work this out, we did chemical mapping on all the films. What I mean by that is you can take just the layer of perovskite, the film of perovskite, and look at the distribution of different atoms within the layer. So we looked at the distribution of both lead and tin within the perovskite, we found that lead was very uniformly distributed, but tin was forming in clumps on the surface of the perovskite. What's more, these clumps were where oxygen was binding to, so we realised that these tin clumps on the surface was the region that was trapping the electron uh, because of reactions with oxygen. We then did the same chemical mapping on a perovskite that also included some zinc. And here we found that these tin clumps no longer formed, so there was no region where the oxygen could react with. In other words, the zinc is preventing oxygen from degrading the perovskite. This is an example 
of how we can improve the stability of these materials as our understanding of their formation and growth uh, continues to grow. There is a huge amount of work going on internationally into these materials and I've thoroughly enjoyed working with collaborators both in the UK and further abroad. I'd like to thank my supervisor and Emmanuel College for all the support that I've been given during the PhD and if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Thank you.